Alrighty, so this is according to Callus. This is going to be a twofer. I finally got around to doing my Independence Day um, episode. Uh, we're going to carry on with the Health and Human Services section of the Republican Party platform for the state of Texas for 2022. And we'll see how long my uh, voice and my mind, quite frankly, holds out on this. Um, here we go. <clears throat> health and Human Services, mental health will be the first section. Caring for citizens who are mentally disabled, we urge the legislature to come continue funding, operating in all state-sponsored living centers for medically or mentally disabled legal Texas residents and to continually seek common sense improvements to increase efficiency. Mental health. We support the parents... Right to choose or reject with prior written informed consent and without penalty each medication, medical health assessment, or survey administered to their children. Okay. Government funded health prog programs. Wow. <clears throat> Parental safeguard. We support abolishing the Texas Child Medical Health Care Consortium. The trauma informed care policy, school based med mental health providers, school based and school connected mental health. Interventions and other public school programs that serve to expand access to minor legislature to the minor, excuse me, legislature shall prohibit all reproductive health care services in public schools. OK, well, this seems a little bit confused, particularly since these uh, this law was just passed in the last session by a good number of our good conservatives. So that's an interesting thing, don't you think? Welfare reform. We support the abolition of all federal welfare programs as they are not an appropriate role of the federal government. Until such time, the welfare reform, we should encourage partnerships with faith-based institutions, community business organizations to assist individuals in need. We encourage welfare reform in the following areas. Denying benefits to individuals who cannot prove citizenship. Reforming welfare programs to require recipients to work, learn, and train to move towards self-sufficiency. Reforming welfare programs to require recipients to remain substance abuse-free in exchange for temporary benefits not exceeding two years. Requiring all fair recipients to submit to random drug testing in order to receive benefits. Requiring the money provided through the SNAP to be used only for nutritious feuds consistent with and included under the WIC program to be released only with a photo ID of the approved user, implementing non-monetary based assistance program for providing supplemental food benefits and removing prisoners from the welfare rules. Okay, aside from the fact that my mouth is not working properly at the moment, let me just say that um, I would like to know where this money's coming from in the first place. If the state of Texas is doing this, why? If we're getting the money from the feds, what do we have to do in order to get the money from the feds? And again, why? Why don't we just stop? If you're not here legally, you get nothing. If you're in jail, you get nothing. If you have not worked for more than a year without good reason, you get nothing. It seems real simple. <clears throat> All right, number, uh, I guess, 137 here. Child support related to welfare. Mothers and applying for government financial support exempting rape victims shall provide verifiable name of any known contact of the birth father who which information should be turned over to the state of Texas Attorney General's office for 30 days for collection of child support. Okay. So mom's getting government support, but we're going to go after the dads that aren't there. They probably aren't working. How we get the money. And then when the dad doesn't pay the money, we throw them in jail, which means then we're paying the dad because we're taking care of the dad and feeding the dad who's done nothing other than have a child out of wedlock, potentially. So we're paying double. I'm not sure how that's helpful. All right. Oversight of disability claims. We call for stronger, more stringent reviews of disability claims to ensure the assistance is provided to only those truly in need. Hmm. Only truly in need. I seem to remember reading about this in a book that an author wrote about that when money is dependent upon need, people find more reasons to need money. Uh, I guess Rand made that all up. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's see here. Next one. 
Medicaid reform. We support Medicaid block grants to states to recur- returning Medicaid to its original purpose to be a temporary assistance program, and we oppose further expansion of Medicaid. Pretty sure there's no constitutional basis for Medicaid. Perhaps that would just take it to court. Just a thought. Medicare reform. Medicare should be a non-penalized opt-out for those who have health care insurance through their employer and continue to work. Um, again, same thing. Patient Protection Affordable Care Act, a.k.a. Obamacare, we demand immediate repeal of the Patient Protection Affordable Care Act. We believe it to be unconstitutional, which it is, and which our people with the R's after their name couldn't figure out a way to do that for two full years. But I'll just leave that alone. Home and community-based system services, we call them Texas legislators, support the home and community-based services as a pro-life alternative and alternative for children and adults with disabilities. <clears throat> I believe this was actually modified and made slightly better at the convention floor. And I believe that if we're going to cherish life and protect life, we have to be prepared to accept the cost related to that. And here we go. The homosexuality stuff. Uh, Homosexuality is an abnormal lifestyle choice. We believe that there should be no granting of special legal entitlements and a creation of special status for homosexual behavior regardless of the origin, state of origin. We oppose any criminal or civil penalties against those who oppose homosexuality out of faith, conviction, or the belief in traditional values. No one should be granted special legal status based on their alphabet identification. Um... Yeah, I'm just going to leave that alone. Nothing to say. <clears throat> gender identity. We oppose all efforts to validate gen- transgender identity for the purpose of attempting to affirm a person under the age of 21. If their perception is inconsistent with their biological sex, no medical practitioner or provider may engage in the, fo- engage in the following practices. Intervene in any way to prevent natural progression of puberty, administer, provide opposite sex hormones, and perform any surgery to healthy body parts under underage person. Um, I thought that was called child abuse. I thought that we already had existing laws and I'm sorry, but if I was a dude and my wife was turning my son into a girl, I might be more involved than just suing that person. Just saying, but I can't say for sure because it's not me. No taxpayer funded for sex change. We oppose the use of taxpayer funds for any type of medical gender dysphoria treatments or sex change operations and or treatments. This includes or does not limit to military personnel as well as inmates, federal, state, and local prisons, jails. Inmates must be housed according to their biological sex. No federal, state insurance or probate money should be allocated for the use of such treatment. I'm shocked. If you're in prison or in jail, I would think the only medical care you would get would be to prevent you from dying so you could serve your term out. But uh, what do I know? Counseling methods. Therapists, for psychologists, and counselors licensed with the state of Texas shall not be forbidden or penalized from any licensing board for practicing regenerative therapy or other counseling message which the counseling clients of any age with gender dysphoria or unwanted same-sex attraction. So I guess what they're saying is you ought to be able to get treatment if you're unhappy with your mind addiction we oppose legalization decriminalization of all of illicit natural and or illegal synthetic drugs and we support the exercise and zero tolerance policy with the maximum penalty for illegal drug manufacturers and distributors we oppose any needle exchange program faith-based rehabilitation program shall be considered part of the overall rehab program okay and i will point out that we added in the part about illicit natural and or illegal because apparently there was some clarification necessary there <clears throat> number 148 cannabis classification congress shall remove cannabis from the list of schedule one and move it to schedule two there you go simple enough pornography crisis the state of texas shall recognize that pornography is a public health hazard Oh, I guess I missed that. Pornography's not good. 
I don't know if I'd call it a public health hazard. But okay then. Ban on exposing minors to pornography online. We call upon the elected leaders to compel any websites displaying pornographic content in Texas to implement aid verification for preventing minors from accessing the content and block any or block or punish any websites that continue to make such material available to minors. Okay. Pornography crisis. The state of Texas shall recognize that pornography and pedophilia are public health hazards. I think we already covered that. And pedophilia is not a public health hazard. That's a criminal offense. And those people should be dealt with harshly. Simple as that. Healthcare independence. All right. Medical freedom. Boy, I don't know. Hopefully my throat will hold out for this one. We call for the addition of Texas Bill of Rights that explicitly states that Texans have natural and inalienable rights to refuse vaccination and medical treatment. Therefore, the following are expressly forbidden even in emergency or in a pandemic. Sense informed consent is basic human right in an attempt to mandate force or chorus any medical test procedure or product including vaccines or masks. All person are I'm sorry. Our personal health care decisions are private in an attempt to use a citizen's perceived health, infection recovery, or vaccination status as a condition, maintain or obtain housing and employment or employment benefits, ten school or child care or access state services. Keep in mind, all these are forbidden. Any school, public, private, or health care provider withholding from a parent or a legal guardian information that is relevant to the mental, physical health of a minor to include information related to the minor's perception that his or her Gender or sex is inconsistent with their biological sex. Any mandates to public, private, government, or medical entities for treatment, vaccination passports, or mask requirements, health insurance surcharges, or controlled substances of any kind. Any involuntary isolation or quarantine of anyone not experiencing any active contagious infection. Any withholding of the risks and benefits of proposed inter- intervention, including quantifiable adverse effects, that must be equally communicated with excessive accessible to the patient or the minor patient's parents or guardian. Again, once again, these are all things that will be forbidden. Any prevention, visitation of the ill with the risks acknowledged and mitigated according to patient or visitor choice. Any Nuremberg Code violations, Nuremberg Code violations, including but not limited to the requirement to use of experimental use of medicine Medications must provide full knowledgeable consent and be free from any form of coercion or inducement. Any tracing of individuals with, by cell phones or means for any reason without individual court issued warrant. We ask that the contract tracing program, workforce, and center programs agreement be rescinded. Any requirement that a nurse practitioner can only provide health care to Texans under delegation agreement with a physician in the state of Texas. Any holding of individual against their will or that of their parent or guardian in hospital or resident care facility or preventing an individual from changing their health care provider. Again, all those things will be forbidden under the medical freedom. Texas Medical Practice Act to protect the rights of patients and physicians. Texas Medical Board, TMB, shall adopt the following provisions in the Texas Medical Practice Act. Protect the rights of patients to choose natural solutions, including chiropractic care, to their health programs as problems, excuse me, as well as the physician's right to provide natural solutions for health problems. Protect physicians from interference from the TMB or the Texas State Board of Pharmacy in the physician's treatment plans or prescriptions. Eliminate confidential complaints against physicians. Eliminate anonymous medical witnesses against physicians. Mandate legal due processes in all TMB proceedings. Allow physicians the right to have a complaint against them tried in a state district court. Allow physicians, I'm sorry, rather an administrative law court. Prohibit TMB members from working for insurance, pharmaceutical companies, or hospitals while serving on the board to prevent a conflict of interest and prohibit intimidation tactics by TMB lawyers against physicians. So basically, we need to quit quit mistreating our doctors and we need to make sure that all of our patients are treated well by our doctors. That's what those two long things were all about, I think. Medication manufacturing. Medications and prescription drugs consumed in the U.S. should be manufactured in the U.S. for security, consistency, and reliability of the drug. We strongly encourage our state to promote private entities to initiate and sustain the buildup of supply chain manufacturing medical and health products in the state to help reduce costs and increase the availability of the medical products in, to its constituents. Sounds great. Don't trust the FDA, but sounds great. <clears throat> Labels on medications, the labels on on the prescription or over-the-counter drug supplements and medical supplies must be required to show the country what you're manufactured or produced. 
Sounds great. Medical records and informed consent. We informed consent. We oppose any state or federal medical record computer database that stores personal identification identifiable identifiable. Hmm. Personal identifiable. I I'm sorry, folks. Uh, basically, any personal records on citizens without their written consent. The right to try. We urge the Texas state legislature and the governor to enact laws to protect the patients and their doctor's rights to have access to experimental or off-label medications, procedures that can potentially be life-saving or improve the quality of life without the medical board, pharmacy board, or hospital boards interfering. Hmm. Healthcare savings account. All individuals should be allowed to establish health... Savings accounts, individuals should be allowed higher annual contributions to health and savings accounts. The Texas HA, we recommended SA, well, HA, Texas HSA. We recommend a creation of the state of Texas health savings account with funds in the excess needed of those needed returned to the rainy day fund. Oh, okay. My apologies. So they're saying we're going to take the money out of the rainy day fund that if it's not necessary to put in the Texas health savings account for the purpose of enabling the state to develop reserves sufficient to exit the medical or I'm sorry, the federal Medicaid program, which will not expire nor be utilized for any other purpose. So basically we're going to save money so we can sever ourselves from the Medicaid program. Kind of like that. Okay. Environmental health, toxic exposure. We support the immediate implementation of the Toxic Toxic Exposure Research Act of 2015, which will ensure the federal government will establish a database on all established, I'm sorry, exposed veterans and their families. Hmm. I'm sure there's a reason this is included, but I'm not sure I'm thrilled with a federal government database. Hmm. I'm going to guess it has something to do with what went on in Camp Lejeune, but that's just my guess. <clears throat> Before I fade out here, let's carry on. Parental rights and responsibilities. We support the fundamental constitutional rights of parents to raise, educate their children, including the rights to direct care, custody, control, upbringing, moral and religious training, medical care of their children, local, state, and federal laws, regulations, or policies that limit parental rights in the rearing of their both biological and adopted children shall be not be enacted. Parents have the God-given right and responsibility to direct and guide their children's care and moral upbringing. Oof. Parental rights and dependent adult children, as long as parents are responsible for an adult child through college and the age of 26, when children are in the parents' insurance, the parents must have access to medical information, grades, or information normally afforded to parents of minor children. Okay. Parental consent. We insist on a informed parental consent for all medical care counseling. For all minors. Wow. Okay. The day is catching up on me, folks. I apologize. I'm going to get through uh, one more page. Here we go. Conscience clause. All persons and legal entities have the right of conscience and should be protected under Texas law if they conscientiously object to participate in practices conflict with their moral and religious beliefs. This includes, but is not limited to, abortion, the prescription for and dispensing of drugs with abortifacient potential, human cloning, embryonic cell or embryonic stem cell research, eugenic screenings, genetic engineering, euthanasia, assisted suicide, harmful futile procedures, vaccines, and the withdrawal of nutrition hydration. We call upon the Texas legislature to enact additional conscious protections for all healthcare professions, including medical students that are all encompassing and enforceable at the state level and protect against adverse action, retaliation taken against the individual. Fetal tissue harvesting and stem cell research. We support legislation prohibiting the criminalizing the harvesting sale and experimentation on commercial use of human ve- fetal tissue, including for vaccines, which requires or is dependent upon the destruction of human life. We incor- encourage adult stem cell research using cells from umbilical cords from adults and from other means that does not kill human embryos. We also support the elimination of public funding for embryonic cell- stem cell research research on fetal tissue, or human cloning. All products that use embryonic or fetal tissue in their production shall be labeled in the state of Texas to inform consumers, promote alternatives, and affirm the value of human life. That's good. Alternatives to abortion. Excuse me. 
We urge the Republican Party of Texas to support programs to provide assistance to pregnant women by protecting and increasing the funding to Alternatives Abortions Program. Ensuring women have medical insurance coverage up to one year postpartum, making it safer for pregnant women to give birth in Texas. Safeguarding pregnant and per- Renting college students from discrimination, ensuring access to educational opportunities, benefits, accommodations, and support services, and utilizing a reformed adoption process. I gotta say, if we're going to stop abortion, we have to have a plan. I might have mentioned this in my Life After Row episode, but we have to have a plan on what we're going to do and how we're going to best do it and what's the what's best for the newly born children, those that have issues and those that don't, but all are going to lack parents to some extent. So, all right. Discriminatory abortion. We support legislation such as Preborn Non-Discrimination Act, Pre-NDA, to close existing discriminatory loopholes that fail to protect preborn children suspected of having a fetal abnormality or disability, we support legislation to enact anti-discriminatory language to apply to additional protections against preborn children at risk of being aborted because of sex, race, disability, age of gestation, in addition to providing families with information about life-affirming social and medical services available to them in Texas, such as the perinatal palliative care. Interesting. We banned abortion, but now we want to make sure we ban discriminatory abortion. Okay. I understand, and I guess this is a shotgun approach, which I agree with, actually. Planned Parenthood, we support completely eliminating the complete, uh, completely eliminating of public funding for or contracts with Planned Parenthood or any abortion provider or their affiliates. We oppose their digital or physical presence in schools or other public institutions, as well as the expansion of their facilities in our neighborhoods. We call for state law prohibiting governmental contracts with abortion providers or their affiliates. And if they're providing abortions, perhaps we arrest them or sue them. <clears throat> human embryos. We support the adoption of human embryos and the banning of human embryo trafficking. End of life patient protection. We support patients' rights, especially near the end of life. <coughs> Excuse me. And call for the existing legislation, legislation so that medical professional may not deny care, change advanced directives, originate directives for a patient without informed consent of the patient or the parent's designee. Advanced directives act in strengthening by requiring hospitals attending or threatening to withdraw life-sustaining treatment against the patient's wishes or their advanced directive to continue all treatment and care for such patients pending transfer of another facility, discriminatory rationing of health care services premised on the aspect of life of the patient, including patient's age, sex, race, disability, or perceived quality of life is prohibited. And we want to, oh, I'm sorry, the next one, repeal the anti-life 10-day rule. We support the pro-life priority as a legislative priority and include... Therein, a call for the Texas legislature to repeal the unethical, unconstitutional, unprecedented anti-life 10-day law, section 166.046, Health and Safety Code, Texas Advanced Directive of Zax, and replace it with a truly life-affirming law that requires physicians to adhere to the patient's or surrogate's medical decision about life-sustaining treatment and provides for physicians who disagree with the patient's decision to transfer the patient to another physician or facility, they will honor their decision to continue life-sustaining treatment. Such a law will guarantee due process and a right to life for vulnerable Texas patients. Well, folks, that's all for Health and Human Services. I got to tell you, I know some of this is dry. I know some of this is maybe even duplicative. I know it requires a bit of effort to follow along. I try and be somewhat entertaining about it and spice it up a little bit and read fast. But we need to know what it is we say we believe. These people are supposed to be articulating our beliefs of Timor. And while I might have my problems with Timor, mostly that they don't follow their own rules, um, that is where we're at. And that's, that's, we're obligated to fight the good fight. We're obligated to make the most of what we have in front of us. 
And really the biggest takeaway under Health and Human Services was the notion that we're supposed to protect life. We're supposed to acknowledge that not everybody's the same, but we're all supposed to be respected. We're also supposed to allow for people to treat themselves and decide what's best for themselves, but we're supposed to protect minors. We pointed out that abnormal deviant behavior is not healthy and not consistent with our pro-life attitude. But I think we also stop short of condemning, abusing, and damaging those people. The challenge is, is that we can only go so far. We have to be consistent. We have to stay on the right path. And while we can disprove or disapprove or categorically deny that something is wholesome or we can say it's unbiblical, I'm not comfortable with forcing somebody to do something. I'm not comfortable with mandating something on somebody else. That's something a Yankee would do. In fact, the Yankees have a long history of doing that. Sometimes that means you have to accept people that disagree with you. Sometimes that means you have to accept people that do things that you don't like. And that can be a challenge. And that, that's, that's not always easy. But if you claim to be a Christian, if you claim to have Christian or conservative values, you have to also understand that not everybody's going to agree with us all the time, but they're also not going to listen to a word we say if we're always running them into the ground. There's a line there. Nobody's saying that we have to accept it as being a good thing, but we have to accept those people that they exist. They have value. They're humans. One of the things that and I don't remember if it's in here or not because there's a lot of stuff in that platform. There are a lot of people that are not me, not you. They may not have a house. They might. They may not even remember what they did six weeks ago because of various things that are wrong with them. But they're still humans. They still have value. And we have to remember that. That's part of the pro-life value that we are supposed to bring to the table, that all life has value. All life is created in the image of God. Sometimes that means that you have to accept that people are just messed up, but they need to be loved. They need to be brought closer to God, not chased away, not made to feel like they're not worthy. I don't think we do that in the Republican Party. And if I thought that was truly the case, that would be a big problem. Now, we're projected as to be doing that by our, you know, our friends with the D's after their name generally, but that's not the case. But we need to be able to articulate that. We need to be able to show them. And I think a lot of what this is in this platform goes in that right direction. There are a couple of things that are unfortunately harsher than they need to be, but they're not wrong. They're they're a true statement. They're they're accurate, but sometimes you don't have to lead with that. The Bible talks about speaking about, you know, the truth and love, and it's the truth, but there's not a whole lot of love. And I'm guilty of it. I do it often occasionally. <laughs> I contradict myself there, but occasionally I've done it. And often people point it out to me, I guess would be the better way to phrase that. I don't try and hide my failures. I'm honest about them. I just suspect that a good number of people are too busy pointing their fingers at everybody else while not paying attention to their own shortcomings. A certain irony is that I'm now echoing my uh, clown-in-chief in McKinney here He's so busy calling out everybody else for their shortcomings and 
prancing around telling them they ought to pull the log out of their own eye before they worry about, you know, the little chip in somebody else's eye. Well, quite frankly, (laughs) he'd be the pot calling the kettle black. But that's a different story. With that, my friends, uh, we're bustling on our way through this uh, Republican Party platform of 2022. This has been a Monday. I hope it's been worth your time. If you wouldn't mind, like, share, comment, subscribe. This podcast is here for us. I'm based in McKinney, Texas. I've been in Collin for 25 years. I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. We're making our stand here. We can make a difference here. We need to hold Collin. We need to hold Texas. The only alternative is just not thinkable. And as much as I like the idea of Texas, as much as I fancy myself a pro-Texas guy, I also know that once you pull that ripcord, that means everything else was lost. That is the escape plan, the escape hatch. That means there's nothing else left. And I'm not quite ready to do that. But I'm also not afraid nor ashamed to say that it's there and we need to be willing to at least discuss it. With that, my friends, I will see you on the other side.